Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Get Your Paint On this Thursday. I'm joined here with Jeff Olson and Tony Konacek. Today is our last streaming day until lock and load, everybody. So welcome to the fun zone. Yeah. Also the alternatively super relaxed and fun time zone. Uh, so a couple of things here announcement-wise. Uh, kind of went over the first one, which is that this week is the last, or this is the last day of streaming. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Until the... To lock and load. Until after lock and load. So, well, I guess we'll be streaming at lock and load. Yes, we'll, we will be streaming a lot okay. at lock and load. Okay, so we will be streaming a lot at lock and load. But Wait, are there 31 days or 30 days in this month? There are 31. 30. Darn it, I was going to say it's three weeks exactly then. <laughs> no! Oh, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's the 31st. Man, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's no real point in doing stream schedule. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Hobby and Terrain blog. This is the Privateer Press terrain blog where Danny, our terrain guru. master, yeah, that's cool. Guru, too, I guess. We'll go with uh, is setting up all of his terrain stuff for our <coughs> tables of lock and load. So uh, and make sure you guys check that out while you're there, and uh, follow the Privateer underscore Press underscore Terrain blog. And he and Evan are down there doing like. Super secret. Yep. Cool stuff. That there would, may be uh, some be special projects mode. going on. So special, he, special projects, special teams. Yeah, we've. Uh, you, you can see the uh, infernal table is pretty much more or less wrapped up, and you've seen little bits and bobs of it for yep. the last uh, couple months, and now that that's concluded. He may be working on something else that will debut. We're not going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you guys will be able to check that out soon at Lock and Load. Yeah. Uh, so lock and load tickets are still on sale, everybody. Uh, June twenty first through the twenty third. Block out your schedule. June twenty first through the twenty third. What? That's what you just said. You said twenty first to the twenty third. Twenty third, twenty third, twenty third. Whatever. What have you? Um, those days on your screen, you can see them. Um, since I'm apparently incapable of pronouncing third. We got uh, hotel rooms, maybe. Yeah, uh, there should I still be so. hotel rooms. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I think we extended last, a whole last I heard, block yeah. or something okay. like that. So. Um, now let's check out Mini Crate now. Uh, should be the same stuff as last week. Uh, I've got the Grey Lord Taskmaster. And dog. And, and dog. Beautiful dog. Beautiful, wonderful dog. Doom Puppers. Mm -hmm. Doom Puppers. Uh, and the Bride of Arcadius, which is a free VIP subscription model, uh, which we showcased a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago on stream. Uh, and then we've got uh, Boto Chagatai, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, the Unicorn Clan, uh, which is available until June 5th. And we have Shosuro Sadako. Mm -hmm. Nice, nicely done. Clean. Yeah, super uh, which clean. is the VIP six month VIP subscription model for the Legend of the Five Rings mini. I need to go snag one of those for my role playing game. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, and then back to today's model, or last week's model, or a little bit of everything. A continuation. Yeah, uh, I figured this guy was still in progress, and you know. Uh, due to the busyness around the office and and work schedule, I figure we'll we'll do a little bit more work on this guy. Well, I think that you know we, um, you kind of showed off some of the the armor for um, your was a Sky Sentinel or Defender X that you're painting. Uh, it's, I can't uh, remember. Sky Sentinel. Sky Sentinel. Mm -hmm. uh, all the red armor that looks so cool on there. And uh, last week, I don't think we just got to get far enough and see see that progress. So we'll go. Yeah. So definitely want to showcase some a more bit of that. This, yeah. So um, this. Left hind quarter here is pretty much a completed section, right? So this is like partially completed over here. This is mostly done. There's a little bit more refining that we can do in there, but um, that's kind of what to expect for the rest of all of these armor plates. And what are you going to do with the horse's mane? Do you have any idea yet? Uh, I'm going to go um, gray, I think. Okay. Just to keep it kind of in, in tone with this, like, pale skin tone I've got going on with the horse. Um, but it's definitely going to be a little bit darker. Could you <clears> – <throat> is it possible to use one of the new colors? The so Ash I'm, is I'm thinking about it. Is Ashath Gray appropriate for that? Ashath Gray might work. Um, might want to mix it in with something a little bit different because it's a little dark. Um, but I can – you know, we can just base coat it right now. Dude, this, is, this, like. this is swing. So yeah, take that baseball bat and swing. Let's say hi to everybody in the chat. Hello, everybody. We got, uh, but I do have all the new paints with me here, so we can definitely. 
um, use my def my plan was definitely to be using a lot of the paints here on stream today so you guys can check them out i have a question for you from mm -hmm. twitch chat dustin von berg asks a new paint question yep uh do you think the amethyst rose would be a good highlight for beaten purple yeah be a great highlight for beaten purple pretty warm um i wouldn't go uh directly from beaten purple to amethyst rose i would uh mix the two together first because like beaten purples are really really dark purple so you don't typically want to go directly from one to the other unless you want a really stark transition, which you can definitely do. It also might be that there is some Facebook related issues happening. So if you do hear this and you are watching Facebook, just maybe move over to the Twitch stream because sometimes Facebook is not always doing its thing. Yeah, it can be cranky, but mm -hmm. uh, we, we can combine this party on Twitch. So I'm going to mix a little bit of... Uh, we apologize for anyone whose experience is being interrupted by the Zuckerberg overboards. So I'm going to mix a little bit of Mage Hunter Green into this Asheth Gray um, to get a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. I can't, uh, and I, I don't have these paint splats yet, so oh, I'm, I'm just going to have to go... Yep, and, this, and, then, you're, and then the power of your imagination is yeah. going to have to... You heard the noise, and you, yeah. you're all conditioned to know what Yeah, the Pavlovian next. response. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little bit of con crud. Got a little bit of cough cough. So what, where would you think you would take this, this gray? Uh, you mean, well, like, what else would I do to it? Yeah, what would be the next step up, as it um, were? I might give it a little bit of a brown wash. Okay. Um, I did glaze the skin with that brown, uh, with the muddy brown wash, or muddy wash rather. Um, so bringing that into the the hair is probably something that's good to do. Just keep the kind of the color tones the same. Do you think you'd paint Valen's hair the same to match his horse, or you'd do something totally different? I I'd probably make his hair black. Okay. I was also thinking it could be kind of cool to give him, like, platinum blonde, like, white hair. Yeah, I could do that. Um, my only, like, the only... I'm not sure that actually necessarily matches the scheme. Yeah. I said that purely as, like, a response to the model. Yes. I, I definitely know what you're talking kinda about. Kind of looks like uh, Lucius Malfoy, Draco's dad from mm -hmm. Harry Potter. He's kind of got that, like, those long, flowing, evil locks kind of thing. All, all I could think about after your comment was that if I had a horse... How uh, trying to get its mane to match <laughs> yes. my haircut, right? Isn't that like uh, like people who do like color dog and, shows? Color and cut, yeah. yeah. The dog shows where they try and match their dog or whatever, things like that. That's kind of weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think oh, anyone yeah. doesn't think that there's a certain amount of weirdness required for, for that. On the surface, it doesn't sound very practical. But yet, if you saw that, Extra your points. It, yeah. You're like, wow. <clears throat> Impressive. Especially if you're doing like dog agility and you have like the same, you and your dog match. <laughs> um, uh, how about wants to know, so we talked about Infernals being at lock and load. They will be at lock and load. Um, mm -hmm. We're not, uh, we can't commit to which Infernals are going to be there, but there would definitely be Infernals there. Uh, are we going to have the new paints there? I don't believe so, but yeah, I'm I, not I, sure I about that. I, um, I would not count on it at this point. Yeah, it's possible, but I, outside of that, I really have no other concrete information to give you guys, unfortunately. As much yeah. as I would like to give you Unknown. more solid information. And if you are watching this stream later on the YouTubers... Uh, and you're wondering why we might not be chatting a whole bunch with our Facebook friends because Facebook is killing itself yeah, right now. Facebook so we apologize to our Facebook, today. our Facebook fans. Uh, we we apologize that Facebook is being grumpy town. It does seem like Twitch is working okay though. So, oh, this is an interesting mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. from Valandar the Red, or alternatively Valandar. Um, what would be the difference in making hair look stringy uh, instead of healthy? Uh, 
do you think that that's kind of a product of the sculpt or the paint job or both? And this is kind of directed towards the main, but I think you could actually kind of say the same for Valen himself. Like you could definitely paint up Valen sickly looking and decrepit and almost decayed in a way if you really mm -hmm. wanted to. You could, yeah. you could, you know, the Valen the character is like a person on a horse, but you could paint up Valen the character as like a weird otherworldly, spectral, infernally dude guy, right? Yeah. So I, I think to, to answer the, the first part of that question, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the sculpt. Mm -hmm. like you, if, if hair is stringy like this this mane is... Yeah, it's pretty like you can, sad yeah. looking, yeah. right? Like that's a, He's like a sad looking horse. Yeah, yeah, you could, definitely get a, away with it. You could sculpt a lot of body into it. It could you know, yeah. go up and kind of defy gravity a bit, be full uh, of life. It's got that soul glow. <laughs> but if you were to take, I don't know, an average haircut, I suppose, is there, is there techniques or colors and things you would use to specifically make it look nastier as opposed uh, to luscious? I think how you highlight it definitely um, will, like how you paint it will definitely do that. So for one, um, not painting it with the super... So, like, for instance, if you paint really clean hair, you'll tend to do, and I'll try and get a really bright color to show you this, but you'll tend to do, like, really, really fine highlights kind of like this across. Oh, so you have, like, it's, it would be, like, um, the light reflection kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, you would see the light reflection because it would be nice and smooth and straight. It has a sheen clean. to it. It's got that sheen. Yeah. Um, when you're doing kind of this like maybe it's dirty, Maybelline, yeah, maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, when you're doing this messed up hair, you don't want as much of that. You can do a little bit of it, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be more focused. You can probably also kind of get some some sickly shades in there too, like yeah. the the, um, the the like almost like the greens or the beiges or the the dark you know, the things that the gnarlier colors, right? Yep. I mean, did you? Is it fair to say that like just sticking with desaturated colors? Did you already? Yeah, I mean, cover desaturated that? colors help too. Uh, That's kind of the word I was looking yeah. for, but you guys are way more art intelligent than I am. So, <laughs> so thanks. Yeah, I think paint can can overcome most things when it comes to um, a sculpt. A sculpt, but. It definitely helps if you have a sculpt that lends. Yeah, sometimes you have to put a lot of elbow grease into it. Right, yeah. Like, I don't think anyone looking at this sculpt would be like, this horse is going to go off and win a horse show, <laughs> right? <laughs> With those I mean, the, hor teeth. the horse yeah. is in <laughs> yeah, <that's what> <laughs> pretty good shape, all things considered. It's, it's less of an undead horse and more of a, like, demonic horse. Yeah, well, dude, it's got some, got some gnarly chompers. Yeah, I think its face is pretty... Yeah, that you know <laughs> yeah. yeah, that dude's uh dude, those are straight up fangs. Yeah. And he's like missing the whole bottom half of his face. The rest of him looks pretty healthy. I mean the horse the horse has just kinda like got weird. I mean, it's got that kind of skeletal face. But yeah. the the rest of it, it there's like there's no pitting, there's no visible like mm -hmm. spots. Yeah, he's not like he's not literally skeletal. Like he's right. not literally falling apart right. and there's rib Correct. bones sticking out. Right. Which is what you typically expect yeah. to see when you're looking at No, this is clearly a like living but corrupted or right. nasty horse, right. right? Like Yeah. And the cool thing is like you can paint it like that, right? Mm -hmm. You can still have a lot of the the living features. Like it can still have a really shiny clean mane if you really want it to. I'm disappointed he's not like what is it, palominos? We've got like the big spots on them and stuff. <laughs> That the ones I don't know. I'm not a horse. The person. healthy, healthy cream color. Yeah. Stylish and beautiful, minus the, the teeth. I was a. Uh, are you? Um, I can't see his eyes below kind of that Doom Reavery style helmet he's got on. Are, the are Swiss there, cheese helmet. Are there eye holes, or is it all just the? Uh, I don't know. The grill from there. I don't. I just no. wondering if you do like green glow or, or a glow color of some sort. I think you sort could do glow. I, I think if you did it, you'd do out of all of them. Yeah. At least that's how I would interpret yeah, it myself. I would, I would do that, I think. I'm not sure I'm going to. Yeah. I think I kind of like, I mean, I think, 
I think the the and I'm doing air quotes here that everyone can clearly see, but I promise you I'm doing them. <laughs> I think the 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 risk there is that um it can draw the attention away from Valen. Yep, that is exactly what I was thinking about. Um <clears throat> because if if and this is actually I'm sure we've covered this at some point talking about things, but for those who might not necessarily know, the focal point for models is the face. That's where you want to typically draw people's attention to, uh, especially when you have a big signature character piece like this. Um, and yeah, I don't think you want to detract from Valen by making the horse's face all glowy. Jordan. Hungerford says you shaved. You don't look shaved. I mean, I guess your head. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, I mean, you're rocking. You're, my, sport, you're sporting a new do. My beard. My beard is definitely less. It still looks fairly robust to me. Yeah, I it mean, looks. It almost looks Brendonian. Brendonian. <laughs> uh, so ironically enough, uh, I I checked to see if I could rubber band. <laughs> if you could rubber band, <laughs> I still can. I can have a little baby one if I get, if I get real in there. You know, you get a little, little tiny, little tiny baby one down here. Uh, but it, I was definitely it was definitely a lot longer before. I think um, you should I think you should but, go cut all cut it pretty down pretty far. But that's just my personal. Uh, you know I might next time. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a while since I've had it pretty pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Do you oil your beard? I do. Oh, I do. Okay. But, uh, do you have like a beard comb thing? I do. Wow. I have two beard combs. In fact, it's impressive. <laughs> yeah. I've I, never, I have one I've never used that came with like a beard trimmer. You're more like a Han Solo style beard going oh, I got, on. You're I, ruggishly I, handsome. I got like a 90s party of five. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> 90s party of five. I've been rocking this length for a long That's time. That's fantastic. <laughs> Way to go, Tony. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, this is why yeah, I, I, I always around. just, I mean, Jordan looks like he's hiding something in his beard. Maybe I am. Maybe I'll have some breakfast in there. Uh, Hungerford is asking if he can shave you. No. Are you sure? Can we make this a thing? Mm. What if we played a game at Lock and Load of Riot Quest? And who and if and if you if he wins, he can shave you. And if you win, something, 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 Batman or Star Wars. So, <laughs> so I'm not doing that because he designed the dang game. So so? Trust me, he sucks at it. <laughs> Use your beard shavings as basing material. Oh, First God. off, Hungerford, what? that's disgusting. That is gross. <laughs> that is gnarly, dude. <laughs> However, oh. <laughs> Valandar the Red, uh, using it for using your beard clippings for custom brushes. However, no, nah. that's just entrepreneurial. Except yeah. that your your beard hair oh, I missed, is not great for using. I missed this. another question. I missed a question from Hungerford, and I apologize. He asked, what's the focal point of the blockhouse, since I was talking about how the focal point of the model is often the face? Uh, it's your face, actually, is the focal point of the blockhouse. My the blockhouse? face specifically, or Hungerford's face? Hungerford's or, face is the focal point of the I blockhouse. mean, in the case of the, hung, in the blockhouse, it would, the flag is probably a good example. Yeah, the flag or the cannon. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that is dangerous. <laughs> I still think it's Hungerford's face. Sure. I mean, you could not put the flag on, and you have a pretty flat space, and you could just freehand Hungerford's face onto it. Yeah. yeah. Do we? So Sabian Asher asks if we have a non-metallic colored metal tutorial. Do we have an NMM tutorial? Not we don't. specifically. I think all of our tutorials that revolve around painting metals mm -hmm. um, involve – non-metallic colors, yeah. but ultimately they still revolve around using metallic paints. Um, so I, I get so sort of... So this is kind of a, a, an deep interesting question. question. Yeah. Because, like, well, we we as a studio, and we, I mean, me predominantly is the painter who paints the models of, of the studio. Yeah. But all the... And, the, and um, your predecessors and so forth. Yeah, the predecessors and so forth. Uh, we've never really done non-metallic metals... Um, in the past, yeah, that's not our that's not our it's, studio it's not, scheme. Yeah, it's as not our studio scheme. Um, and you see me doing it a lot on stream because w I don't do it a lot for work, and I like to kind of try and balance out um, working on both styles. And because I do a lot of true metallic metal for work, I try to do 
is in, when I'm not forced to do true metallic metal, I try to do it in my off time mm -hmm. to kind of get some practice in. Because um, okay. you never know if it's ever going to come up. Mm -hmm. And also, studying non-metallic metal makes your true metallic metal better. Because yeah. it, it, it focuses you on learning how light interacts with objects better. And the better you get at figuring that out, the better your true metallic gets. So and, and it's last kind of like an exercise in, in how, to, how to do. Yeah, it's just an exercise practice. And, and for people who might not know, essentially what non-metallic metallics are is attempting to achieve... Um, I mean, it's basically this. Right? Yeah, you're attempting to achieve an effect that makes it look like it's a it's metal without actually using metallic paints. Mm -hmm. And metallic paints l typically mm -hmm. literally have little flecks of metallic reflective substances in them, essentially. And so not using those um, to achieve metallic effects. A good way I kind of like to look at it is you look at like um, the chrome bumper on a car mm -hmm. and you, you see the reflection of the surfaces and you have that kind of chromey look right. and trying to accomplish something similar without actually using, using a silver it. paint, as it were. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, I definitely, like, last last week when Jordan started painting this model, uh, he went into a little more in depth, and you get to see a little <clears> more <throat> of that process of adding the shade and the highlights and talking about how light hits those surfaces and what it's reflected around it. So if you want to get a little more about the start of that process, uh, I recommend you go to... Uh, YouTube slash Privateer Press Prime. Check out the Valen Hawk Part One, um, and and get some of those details. And then yeah. maybe today, uh, what I thought would be nice um, for me, selfishly, was our last stream for a couple weeks, is Jordan talking about when you're when you're doing that red armor, kind of some of the the pitfalls, or rather how you keep it consistent, right? So choosing. Like, do you choose one light source? Like, how do you how do you do it where these reflections would normally shift on a model as it moves around, but you're keeping yeah. the look consistent over the whole model? So, and real sides? quick, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I do want to jump in real fast, just because I saw a quick question in chat mm -hmm. um, about uh, Screwfizzle asking some glow effect tutorials, and I just wanted Tony to go hit him with those sweet sweet links real quick. Oh, we got so we got a we got glow tutorial. And we have one for a face painting tutorial. Oh, using Hungerford as the face yeah. to paint. But no, if you want to go grab I some links from our that. YouTube, we actually do have several great videos yeah. about Glow. And I just wanted to make sure that they had that content before we kind of jumped into this thing. So I apologize for the interruption. But hit a rockapella. That's you, Jordan. So the rockapella here. What was the question again? Sorry. <clears throat> yes, I totally just. Yeah. Tony, what was your question? Oh, about consistency and like how you establish your light source for your. Oh, yeah. Things um, like that. So I think. A lot of it <clears throat> is um, there when you are painting in a non-metallic metal style. So you're painting with opaque paint and not reflective paint. Um, and this is one of the pitfalls of painting it this way, is that um, inherently it doesn't act like metal. So you can't, it won't have the exact same properties. So what that means is you have to pick a couple of specific angles that you want to be the focal point for the model. So in this, in this case, uh, the focal point that I'm generally choosing, and if you guys can pull the, the cam back up so I can see exactly what, what the angle is supposed to be, this is kind of the angle that I'm, I'm going for right here. Like and the sun is there. Yeah, or not even the sun, but like this is the angle. Because the way sure. that that um, specular highlights work is specular. they always are at a particular angle from your viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So what that means is <clears throat> when you look at these highlights, if I am standing where the camera is, these highlights should all be in the same place. But if I'm standing here, the highlights should be right here. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way that your light interacts or, or your eye interacts with the light that's reflecting off of the metal. So, um, for example, this right here on, on the rump right there, uh, you would be looking at this angle. So it's a little bit of kind of trying to cheat some of those angles a little bit by broadening the highlights or putting them in, in smart places where you'll see them and they'll still look somewhat appropriate and then having the main focal point angles be correct. So for instance, I'm gonna put a highlight 
right here on this leg pad. Let me see if I can get there. So that it's at that same angle. And I'm going to put highlights on his chest kind of in this sort of Got line it. right there. Yeah. And then I'm going to put really invested on the shoulder pad right there <clears throat> so that this specific angle looks correct. And I'm going to do the same thing with highlights right around here on this little front plate. And probably put some like right there and right there. See, that's one of those. Well, I was. I'm very interested in this yeah, no, because yeah. it's I like, like that, how I liked how you were yeah. watching it intently and then you like leaned forward and you're like, oh, yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're like into it. Well, it's like, I, you know, I like uh, I like the hardcore concepts. And and one of those is sometimes translating between, you know, what would you do in 2D art drawing or painting and how that translates to a miniature? Because in some cases um, it's easier, uh, I think, on a miniature when you've got the 3D form and you're you're kind of adding to it. And then in other cases, like with trying to do reflections i think it's actually tougher because on a 2d image your your You're reflections are fixed forced to look at yeah, one you can specific only look at it out. this way and then uh, on a model you're like well now i have to take something that changes in 3d in real life and and pick a way to look at it and keep it consistent and it's yeah. a little more of a challenge so and, and the interesting thing is like even when you're painting with true metallic metals like you're still using some of this same effect because even even with true metallic metals they don't have the same reflective quality that your actual metal will so you still have to cheat it a little bit so it's never going to be perfect but you can get it pretty close yes. and the the closer you get the more it will look like actual metal looks like facebook might it's alive. Yeah, it's, it looks like it hasn't dropped out for a long time. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you stick with us on Facebook, thank you for not giving up. And if you made the transfer over to Twitch, that's cool, too. Glad mm -hmm. you're still with us. Scroll like up just so I can hit some of the, the, the Facebook question or chat to see if I miss any questions. I think we're good here. Oh, Alex <laughs> sent us a goodie box. Awesome. Looking forward to that, Alec. Unless it's, like... You know, got poison in it. I mean, it gummy and chocolates. <laughs> you don't never know. I can't, and I don't even know if that's if that's gummies and chocolates, or if it's gummy chocolate, which would be a new one. <laughs> Jay Lambo, yo, AK Space Wolf in Twitch chat says that uh, they binge watch the tutorial video a couple times a week, and it's really been helping them improve. So thanks. Yeah, thank you for for checking them out and, and learning from them. So it was nice to hear that those videos are, are well received. I'm curious to know, Space Wolf, what um, w which of those videos, like what what techniques stood out to you very much? Like, did you have were you having difficulty with some that the videos helped out in, or or did you not even know how to do certain techniques or know that you could and learn from those videos? I'm just curious to know what what stuck out to you. So you can improve your process, Tony. Absolutely, always looking, yeah. yeah. Always looking to improve. Always looking to be the next best thing. Tony is secretly a badass painter. Yeah, he's painting some models for me. He's he's real good. He, he's K. He's, okay. He's K. Okay. He's K. I brush. <laughs> I brush on the reg. Yeah. <laughs> I brush on the reg. Uh, do we want to hit them with maybe a C fact, or do we want to do? Both we, yeah, well, we do have uh, we do have CFAX today mm -hmm. because uh, Doug Seacat is awesome, and it is our last stream for a couple weeks, so yep. we decided to do some CFAX. So let me, we're going to we got some me, questions. So let me get myself set. Okay, here. well, I will I will preface this for our our lovely viewers. Okay. So these CFAX are definitely very spoilery in the sense that there's not really a great way for anyone to have known this yet, since a lot of this is stuff that's going to be coming out in Oblivion. It's about Val and Hawk here. So we're going to ask the question and then let people kind of speculate and figure it out mm -hmm. and maybe try and make some, some educated guesses and then we'll hit you with the answers. But we don't actually, you know, we, it's actually impossible for anyone to to know, but we thought it would be kind of a fun little guessing game and to teach you a little bit more about the character that Jordan's working on here. Yeah, you can use your knowledges to see if you can piece it together. Mm -hmm. And here we go. <laughs> I forgot about the self facts. Doug Seacats, Seafax. Question. Question one. I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Why is Hawk 
Fallen. Like, why is his title yeah. Valenhawk the Fallen? Fallen Knight, yeah. Yeah. He fell off his horse too many times. <coughs> That's my guess. <laughs> Seems unlikely, but, they made, they but made not fun of him impossible. For falling off of his horse a lot in school, and he just kind of picked up the fallen as a title. You know? Oh, see, that could be it. And then he got all self conscious about it, yeah. and now he's like a wicked kick ass mm-hmm. writer. But nicknames stick, especially childhood ones. Oh yes, they do. Uh, it's because he tripped and fell off his bed in his life alert. Who remembers the I fallen? I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I so fallen and I can't really get up. Really quick, while well, let these guys figure out the answer to that. Um, this is a glaze of bad bruise and amethyst rose, which and are two new colors. Yeah, two new colors. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> whoa. <clears throat> getting <throat> getting fancy. So here's the thing: Jordan's making this happen too because we did not plan specifically for you to paint this model using new colors. We were just going to show them off, yep. and uh, and now finding opportunity to put them to good use. I actually really like that quite a bit, how that's popping out. Yeah, uh, I saw a JP Great One in Twitch said because uh, he had betrayed his lord to gain more infernal power. Um, he fell for a girl. I actually kind of like that. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's actually pretty that's good. That's cute. It's adorable. Uh, he fell into great duty and fell out of guilt. Uh, betrayed his oath, probably. Uh, but I like the idea that he thought to have died on the battlefield. That's oh, that they thought he was dead and yeah. isn't dead? Ugh, I like that. That's good when you're going. Doug Seacat himself says he's the worst horseman ever. That mm-hmm. time into the saddle, so yeah. there might be a little more stock into that falls off his horse thing than I thought. Uh, let's uh, back up real quick. Uh, over in Facebook, Ivan Kezer asks, "Is that the new Vlad?" No, this is Valen Hawk, the Fallen Knight. He is a solo for the upcoming Infernal Army, which you'll be pre-releasing at Lock and Load here in a month or three weeks. So nope, this is not. But you you could probably make a sick Vlad three conversion oh, out of it. Yeah, this would be a really Really good base for. I can totally conversion. see that. I am guessing he was a follower of Maro and has been corrupted by the Infernals, like the Ghost Knight in Wicked Ways. This is all. These are. There are actually some shockingly close guesses. Basically, like there well, are some people who are have some pretty on point answers here. I mean, that's yeah. There's just there's a lot of these answers that not only could be accurate, but also just be like just good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good backstory. Uh, should we smash him with the answer? Let's hit him. Okay. Hold All on. right. Let me make oh, sure oh, I don't oh, screw oh, this up like I usually do. Oh, already. And All right. I'm ready. Hit it. So, uh, so several people actually had it pretty spot on. Uh, at least conceptually, the idea that he uh, was a, a, some sort of great warrior, great knight, or or person who felt corrupted by power, kind of thing. Uh, the complete answer is. Uh, he was once a knight serving the Order of Illumination. So he was a good guy. He was a, a, a follower of Morrow and mm-hmm. all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, however, uh, for reasons that we'll, you'll find when you actually read a lot of the cool stories and stuff in Oblivion, uh, he has fallen from grace, as it were, fallen from his light. He, he turned away from them for various reasons. Uh, and now kind of think the interesting thing about it that Doug has here is that as a result of his fall, as it were, from him sort of figuring stuff out, he now has a bitter hatred for the organization, and now when the Infernals go to war and they're invading towns and all that stuff, he actually specifically tries to hunt down and fight with members of the Order of Illumination. See, that's dark, because that's yeah. that's not just like, hey, I don't like how... I quit I my, like that's not like I quit my job. I quit, I'm out. Yeah. That's like, you then go to your former uh, co-worker's house and <laughs> just like punch him in the face every opportunity that you possibly can, uh, like favoring them over others. Yeah. Right? I can punch anyone in the face. I'm definitely finding you. Uh, one thing I wanted to know, maybe Doug can can answer this. We were kind of chatting about this chat. earlier, is um, is whether whether Valen Hawk was the uh, champion employee in the Order of Illumination who then... Employee of the Month. Who then fell, yeah, employee of the Month, or if he was like... Low tier, everyone wanted him to quit or get fired anyway. And so him leaving was just kind of like a. Yeah, and that's when he got good, all of his power. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm sure uh, that's probably kind of stuff. Like you'd already trade. been working on it already, maybe. Kind of yeah, riding disgruntled. the line. Just, just like I'm. I'm he just, has a really pushy I'm just boss. showing up and clocking in. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I'm done with this place. So, so Doug Zika says <clears throat> that he was doing quite well and he had very good performance reviews. So it must have been a big deal. Yeah. Um, so big, a large fall, not a. Not a step down, yeah. an actual fall. 
Uh, do we want to go and smash with the second question, or we want to save it for later? Let's give it a little sure. bit. So, so in terms of in terms of getting his smiley faces or thunderclouds, uh, Doug Seacat says that he was infernal hunting was good. Uh, necromantic, what's he say? Infernal hunting, excellent. Necromantic persecution, good. So, uh, was he a people person? Who knows? Yeah, what was he like to work with? Yeah, like we're, we're on that on the triangle of does a good job, dependable, Brings easy it. to get along with. Like what? <clears throat> what are the yeah. two that he favors? The order store is stapler. My stapler. Uh, excuse me. This is not my office. <laughs> you know who hasn't seen Office Space? I'm looking right at him. <laughs> the best part is Chad's never going to know who you're talking about. I think I think at this point Chad knows exactly who we're talking about <laughs> with <laughs> for people. Have we been keeping a list like every we, time? You know, we really it, keep talking about it and we right keep here on the wall. Yeah, we need to have a whiteboard right there on the wall actually. <laughs> I'm going to laugh really hard when Tony like gets up and just grabs a whiteboard and starts we start hashing out a list. Ooh, I screwed up. <sighs> Oh I no! All right, screwed up. What do you do when you screw up? That. Yeah, you just. Oh, rip. oh! oh! Well, you almost dropped a bomb there too. Well, I did drop a bomb. Okay, good thing we owed over it. Definitely then. hear it. <laughs> so, actually, I think this is a, a a pretty good opportunity to talk about when you when fix, you boop your model. Yeah, how to fix stuff like that. Uh, well, the step one: don't do it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> But Second you're, step. But you're going to. Yeah. So. Second step. <laughs> realize that you've done it really fast. Third step. Yeah, wipe, wipe, wipe it away. I'm sorry. With your wet, paint, wet paint is what I was trying to say. Wet paint is very easy to wipe away with either a clean brush or your finger or some paper towel yeah. or anything like that. Now. Usually I just like dry off my brush really quick and then I just get in there. With yeah, gloop it up. And just kind of try and wipe it away. Yep. Uh, but when push comes to shove, if you paint something and you like didn't notice it yeah it is paint you can just paint right over it again yeah it just takes a little bit of extra just, time to it's fix it's just a lot more annoying and things. you see that a lot too where people are like and i you know again i've worked in retail I've, I've sold very many paints and models to different people and a very common question especially from like parents or something whose children are getting into a minis game or something is like well, what happens if they mess up and the answer is like, well, you, you can't really. It's paint. You Acknowledge can, that they've learned a lesson. Yeah, you, you can just paint <laughs> over it if you if, if if you don't like it. There's no such thing as a as a as like a mess up. Mm -mm. And you know, someone even mentioned in chat, you know, this, this happy little accident. It's like a little from Bob Ross yeah. in here. You can you can either use it as an opportunity to to flow into something else, or it's just paint. You paint over it. It is a result you did not intend. Yeah, but yeah. You can just paint over your stuff, and you can see Jordan got that red paint right out there on the um. On his leg, and he just like wiped it off real quick, and now yep. and now I'm just you know putting a little bit of highlights on top of it, maybe bringing up the <clears throat> the brightness a little bit. I I admit sometimes, uh, well actually most times when I end up making a mistake like that, I'll just kind of wipe it off with my finger, mm -hmm. and then it won't be perfect. It's usually what like I try it'll to just kind of leave a little residue on there. Yeah, ninety percent of the time, shrug my shoulders and just go, eh, eh, eh. I guess it stays like that. Yep. Also, but more than doing miniatures, I'm, I'm sure this happened to a lot of people out there. I just have butterfingers. So it's less of a big deal for me to uh, like screw up the paint job part where it's difficult to recover than it is for me to just full on drop a loaded brush into my lap. Like, oh, well, I, mean, I think you guys all, have seen I think me if, drop brushes. I think if all you look close time. to the thighs on like all of my pairs of jeans, um, there's at least one paint mark somewhere. Where where brushes Thanks for that hit imagery. the deck, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I drop a brush maybe once every other show. Yeah. I've ruined a lot of clothes. Yeah, I have a, or rather, I had an old pair of jeans that definitely just uh, had eaten a spray can of primer and like on the knee kind of thing. That'll happen. Yep. And it sucks a lot. I kind of like this. Uh, Valander says in Twitch chat that it reminds him kind of of the sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can yeah. totally kind of get it. He has he has sort of like a classic Euro centric look to him, yeah, slightly greasy. That, that yeah, position. In the it, well, I, you know, and that, that's the thing is when you th when you say Sheriff of Nottingham to me, obviously I go to Kevin Costner and oh yeah, 
yeah. 90s Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Hey, I've seen that one, Hans by Gruber. the way. Yeah. <laughs> and Snape. <laughs> Why can I not think of his name? Where, you oh, can't? No. Uh, okay, I'm going to let you sit here then. No. Don't want to chat say it. I'll oh, give you... Oh, no. Okay. Oh, it's going to come to me. Why a spoon? Because it'll hurt, you idiot. I'm, come on. I'm done. Yeah. Al, Al, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, dude. Yeah. This, has been, this has been happening more and more. Like pop culture icons, like names that I I couldn't remember Christian Slater's name the other day. I was like sitting in the car. And for, like, first off, good... why were you trying to remember Christian Slater's name? Well, because it's Christian Slater. Was it because of his cameo in Star Trek 2? Spoiler no. alert. What Star Trek is it? Oh, Star Trek 6, Undiscovered Country. He's just like a bridge officer randomly. <laughs> but yeah, it's my, my old what man, was Christian my old Slater man in? brain starting to kick in. What was else yeah, was been in it? Oh, I know, but like, what are some of the big things he's been? I just can't think of it. Gleaming the cube, <laughs> pump up the volume. <laughs> Heather's, yes, Heather's is the big one. I don't even know who you guys are talking about. Well, you don't even know who we're. I understand if you didn't. If you, I understand you've never seen Heather's, but you don't know who Christian. So last night, Rob and I were going laying in bed, to go to sleep, and we watched a uh, a YouTube video, a react video of the the React channel. These teens reacting or trying to guess Robin Williams films. <laughs> and that was such a that was such a heartbreaker when they're just like you have these like and Robin, you know, my wife is much younger than I am. She does ten there's a decade difference. So we have a big cultural difference between us. But she was getting really upset when like they didn't know about like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just might be okay. Uh, Marshall Gherkin asks model question mark? Uh, this is Valen Hawk, the Fallen Knight from Infernals. This is uh, one of the new Infernal models that's coming out. I believe he should probably even be at Lock and Load. That is very possible. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, I feel I need to say unconfirmed. Yeah, yeah. It, we say that with all of the asterisks applied to it. Know that there will be Infernals models at Lock and Load. Uh, did you actually are? show the construction of this model? I did not. Oh, man. I thought that was fascinating, like how he's packaged. Oh, yeah. His horse and body... So th this model is... Like two pieces or something? One, two, three, four, four pieces. But he so split down the middle th vertically. Yeah, yeah, so this front half of the horse... And his legs, basically. And the legs are all one piece. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, The separation is kind of like at his groin, essentially. It's all one piece. With the rider, this, too? Valen yeah. is part yeah, of the it. hindquarters? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And then this tail is separate, and this arm is separate. Um, yeah. It was really cool to like see. This like, this whole shoulder piece comes off. Yeah, I walked down to George's desk, like, last week, and I was like, what the hell yeah, is this? I, I, yeah, I turned <laughs> and I was like, I was like, look at this. This yeah, is amazing. Yeah, you, you put it together, it's like, go, boop. And it was like, oh, that's dope. It fits together really, really yeah, well. it was really cool. <clears throat> because classically, in horse models, the, are kind of the whole width together. and breadth of all miniatures games across a thousand years of history it's always the horse is a model, and then the dude goes on top. Well, and then there's always the challenge of, you know, shifts in model or whatever, yeah. trying to get the rider to really fit well in the saddle, yes. right? So that he's, that no, he's contacting, always... but also has the right lean and, and, and the right always orientation. Has, there's always, like, the thigh-calf gap yeah. on, a, on a mounted dude on a horse. Yeah. That's just always there. Except for here. Yep. Cause it's a yeah, it was really, really tight. It was really cool. All right, you ready for another C fact? Oh yeah, I forgot. All right, let's, let's do this one. Smash, smash that C fact in here. All right, C facts. Doxy cat C facts. Q two of two. <laughs> what brought about? I hope did I spoil any of this at all? When no. I was, okay, good. No, no, no. What what exactly brought about his fall? So how did he go from Valen Hawk to Valen Hawk the Fallen? Yeah, because we talked we talked about how he used to be a knight serving the order, and then he got became out. Became an infernalist. Something. Yeah. So what happened? Yeah. What happened between then? How does and one? Now? How does one go from employee of the month to the antithesis yeah. of everything that organization? Like stands specifically, for? riding out into battle to find or of illumination people and punch them or sword them. I suppose more accurately, give them the old S word. I think they're gonna like this answer. We'll give them a we'll give them a second to post. Interesting. So we have a couple things. 
Uh, he got into a fight with the Illuminated One. Uh, says Alec M. Luta in Facebook. Uh, Valander the Red says he was given an impossible order and took the blame for failure. I think that's really cool. I think that's Maybe, really cool. But, yeah. Uh, wanted the power to stop a dude, and he himself became the monster for being being hunted. That's kind of the, yeah. That's the classic. Um, you become the thing. I'll use you, any yeah. power I can get my hands on to do good. Uh, being told to kill a group and find out they're just regular people. Uh, that yeah, that's a kind of very classic. That's a good trope right there for sure. Um, who someone else got all the glory and he got like someone got the glory oh. for some great deed he did. He went on character. Flop. Yeah, he went and he went and smashed on like beat up some huge infernal monster and then some other dude was like, "Sweet, look what I did! I'm so awesome." <laughs> What would Christian Slater do? I mean, Christian Slater, that was part of like the, that was like the River Phoenix and all that too, wasn't it? Wasn't he part of that crew? Yeah. Yeah, right around yeah, that time. The Viper Club. Mm-hmm. Let's make, put up a look at Jordan. God, we just, <laughs> I need to be, where's my, where's the movie list? Yeah. Oh, maybe I, I might have missed um, Winter Golems there, too. The order demand he kills when he didn't want to kill like a baby. That kind of, yeah, kind of goes with the other one we just brought up is the idea that maybe he thought the order wasn't as totes awesome as he was led to believe that mm-hmm. they were their own form of evil, as it were, mm-hmm. because it might be that kind of concept of like, there's there's infernalists in that village, just go burn the whole thing down. But if that were the case, like if you had problems with that what would lead one to become an infernalist i could see being part of an organization and saying i don't like how this organization operates but to just 180 on everything sure i mean it's it's a i don't know i I think that's a very classic concept that's a classic character i mean darth vader right the, mm-hmm. the greatest sci-fi villain of sure. all time. The greatest movie villain of all time. Right. And it's the idea of he, yeah, you have these people who do a thing and then you they they fall to the opposite because of they're disillusioned or they're embittered or jealous or lots of things, right? There's lots of interesting reasons why that might happen. Because, like, maybe it's not so, like, maybe it's not so bad being an infernalist kind of thing. Like, let's say the, infernal, the infernals show up on Kane, and they go and they smash everything, rah, 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 and you know, and as we, you know, the players, we kind, we kind of empathize with the good guys. Oh, we don't want the Infernals to win. Everything stinks, but maybe when if the Infernals won, they're like, hey, it's Taco Tuesday for all Infernalists, <laughs> right? It's just like maybe it's not so bad, right? And so maybe he has a realization that like. I'll have a sweet house and a four-poster bed, and I'll have an SUV and a sedan and yeah. a three two-car garage in suburbia. <laughs> and there's just like an infernal like mowing his lawn next door, right. like right. you know. I think J Hoke or G Hoke or Goke. Oh, he's not, oh, there. We go. Uh, he's yeah, on the, order, the order is the order losing, is the losing side. side. Yeah, he's like, I don't want to be part of that. I want to be on the winning side. Yeah, classic, classic stuff. Yeah, that's all really good. Uh, should we uh, let's see? Give me answer. Yeah, let me get uh, let me get ready. Yeah, there, there you got, do you have two answers here? Well, yeah, we have two answers, and here's the first answer. And the first answer is read oblivion. Lol. Uh, yeah. Doug. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of this is going to be information that's in the oblivion book. It's jam packed full of fluff and lore. It's all the kind of stuff that everyone's been asking for. They want more of the fiction. They want more of the material. They want to read a bunch of Doug's cool stories and stuff. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of great. I mean, the book is basically just a lore book. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just it's just jam packed full of great material about the Infernals, all the Archons, all the forces of humanity fighting back, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and you're gonna learn a lot of great things about things that have happened and things that will be happening. So definitely make sure you check it out. But we do have a little bit more of a of a of a less put your face in the mud answer, <laughs> which is. Um, that he was, uh, he learned some terrible secrets about his order. Can I read this? Can I read this whole thing? Yeah, read the whole thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got I to gotta abbreviate it on the screen Perfect. for space. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> according to Doug, and I actually uh, haven't fully read this story myself, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on my copy of the book so I can kind of go through it. But he was hunting an infernalist known only as the Tattered Monk. Dude, we should make rules for this guy. He sounds like a pretty dope name. <laughs> 
But anyways, he was hunting an infernalist known only as the Tattered Monk, and Hawk learned some terrible secrets about his order and the god Morrow, which shattered his faith. So, so there's a crisis of faith for him at some point. And who knows? And I, I'll be honest, I, ge- I genuinely do not know the answer, but maybe maybe the Tattered Monk is the kind of the classic deceiver person who's like, do you know that Morrow smells funny? And Hawk's like, whoa, <laughs> right? Or something, right? Some, something he finds out that he's either told that they could be lies, they could be truths about his order, his faith, his God, the way the world works, who knows? Um, and that led to him having this kind of crisis of faith and being like, yeah, I'm going to go join the Infernalists. And, and obviously the, the secret must be something actually terrible because we to reel it back, the dude hates the order now of Illumination and specifically goes and hunts them down and right. kills them. So there must be, I'm going to say, maybe some truth in the lies kind of idea, right? Yeah. Who knows? We'll have to find out when Oblivion reaches store shelves to you on this date that I don't know sometime. I want to, yeah, now, now I want to know more about the Tattered Monk. Yeah. Was he was he part of the Protectorate? Or are there monks elsewhere? I mean, monk is a pretty catch-all term for an aesthetic monastic order mm-hmm. kind of thing. He learned that Morrow, according to Valinor the Red, he learned that Morrow used to be twins. Yes, there used to be two, two. Morrow. Yeah. Where did, where's the ban button? Yeah. Well, Landar, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll yeah. see you later. <laughs> <clears throat> the protector, okay, so here we go. Yep, Doug, he, the protector does not have a monopoly on monks. They have the most face punch. Yes, they have kicky monks. That's why they get all the press. They have kicky yeah. monks? Kicky, kicky face punchy monks. Yep. All right, where are we at on this model? Are we, we, took a, we took a C-fact detour, and I haven't paid attention to your painting. We're doing pretty good. Okay, coming along. So... It's a process, right? It doesn't just. Get what do you think that. about what? What are your? What do you? What if? Obviously, we won't be able to get to it like today. We got twenty minutes or so left. But if you were to, um, what? What in your headspace? In your in your in your brain eye? What does um, his like leg, like his cloth <clears throat> cover, look like? Um, it's probably black or like a really. Or you know what? Maybe. Let's I mean, play, let's play around with you this know real it. Quick. Black, gray, and red literally always looks good on a model. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Oh, going with some royale purple. So this is bad bruise. Is that a new color? Yes, yeah, that's one, one of the new one colors. Of the new colors. Give me the noise. Again, sorry. We apologize. We don't have swatches. Just for the new colors, we have everything else. Yeah. I don't know why I needed to qualify that. We'll get them. I'd be like, I'm and prepared. By, and by we, I mean something. you. <laughs> you will get them set up in your one-month break until... Because you're not doing anything. Nope. You're not working on anything at all nope. for the we, next three weeks. We shut off the stream yep. and in then, about 10 minutes, and then... Uh, you sit in your, you sit your just, desk and eat pizza all day. I go home, and yeah. Yeah. And then I'll see you at Lock and Load. Tony's very busy working so on I don't, I don't cool this, videos this and like things like that. It's like blue. I don't either. Um, I might, I might make it into like a black. Do you and think there is a leaving. way where you could kind of tie some of that purpley bits, maybe, in like uh, into the mane or his, the the glow from the eyes or something like that too? Well, it's already in the armor. It is in the armor. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I can definitely like get in here and, and do a little bit of like this. Yeah, that might be that might be a kind of a cool. Tie in. Oh, that's looking. That's looking nice. It kind of makes it look a little bit more spectrally and otherworldly, which helps give it some pop too. Yep. Without uh, <clears throat> making it look healthy. Yeah. Well, I think it'll also look quite a bit different too when I get all this <coughs> trim done because yep. there's a lot of trim down here. And yeah, I, it's I a, don't know if I'm going <clears> to <throat> do it gold or silver yet. There's some ornate stuff, brass or bronze. Also, yeah. maybe could be cool. Just put some color on Sky it. Sky blue. Kind of show what this shape looks like. And uh, this is kind of like a brown you've got going on there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who don't know, this is my personal preference, and I think Jordan will probably kind of agree, but using like browns to base coat for golds and that kind of stuff is 
top choice. So. Neon pink. Yes, I agree. Maybe I'll I'll paint this gold, and then we'll kind of go from there and see if we want to turn see it back that, to silver. Because right now the hind that that hind quarter is kind of our our ninety percent finished product. We're kind yeah. of working towards. Yep. 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 Yeah, I can already see it in my my brain eyeballs. Your brain eyeballs. That's so not so the dumplings right color. today. Where is the right color? That's closer. Do you need something from the rack? No, no, I, I've got it all over here. I just need to make sure I get the right one. Curious to see where you're going with this. It's just what the final result's going to look like. So in my head, I was kind of thinking that, that silver, like you just your yeah, classic I, silver metal might, uh, might look all right. I think silver might be better than this. I don't know. I'm I when he said gold, I was feeling it. So and I'm still kind of feeling it. So I'm I'm gonna reserve judgment until it gets a little bit further along because I actually like it personally. Well, the one thing I like about what's going on is that if you do silver, it kind of it it'll be shiny, but it'll it'll kind of have the same <clears throat> similar value and look as the horse itself. And so whether or not that would be my takeaway nice on silver punchy. is I feel that it would pop so much it would detract from the actual armor which is the the focal point mm -hmm. of that and i feel like this is a little bit more muted and, and um yeah and it just it doesn't it doesn't uh steal the thunder as it were i don't know chat what do you yeah, think chat Oh, yeah, do we have any P3 Oh, painters? my gosh, we almost forgot about P3 Painters. We do have P3 Painters. Yeah, we painters have some today. hashtag P3 Thank Painters. Thank you, Power Gorged. Yes. Yeah, sorry. We're, we do we're, have we're some terrible P3 on our job. <laughs> let's, let, uh, let's let Jordan get to a, a good yeah, stopping point, and in that time, maybe we can answer Alec's question. Alec asks in Facebook, uh, do we have a video on how to make pearlescent? I don't think so. Um, no. I don't think so. And specifically, the full question is, is a video how to make pearlescent so it shifts as people change locations while looking at the model? I think that tends to be, in my experience, the product of an actual, like, a literal paint yeah. that has those qualities. Yeah, matte, matte paint, like uh, the non-metallic paints or, or uh, non-pearlescent yeah. paints. There are companies and stuff out there that really make that. pearlescent style paints. Yeah. Um, I'm not super familiar with them, so I'm not going to give you some recommendation because I, I actually don't know, but... If you hunt around on the Googles, I'm sure you can find something. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't have anything like that in our paint range, nor a video on how to accomplish effect, an mm -hmm. effect like that. Yeah, the only way I can think of is that the, the paint itself has to literally reflect the light. It can't be a painted light effect. Because as soon as the light effect is painted, that's, <clears throat> it just, mm -hmm. that's how it looks. Right. So, no, I'm sorry, Alec, we do not have anything about pearlescent. But good question. It can resolve, result in some interesting research and stuff to, to dig that up for sure. Striker says hashtag pro streamers, pro streamers. Which, you, which thank you for so the hold compliment. On. It's, I, I just wanted to point out that, yeah. that we've been doing this a long time. We never make mistakes. Yeah, and I'd like to point out that of all of the streamers, the three of us, uh, Hungerford, Oz, that's like the, the kind of the core five-man stream team, uh, I'm the only person that gets Stryker's name correctly. Everyone else, all of you filthy animals, put a T in there. It's not Stryker. It's Stryker. See, okay, you're right. And and this this shows my weak characteristics because I would uh, correct people to begin with, and then they would just continue to call him Stryker. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't know if it was ever determined if it was a typo and it is actually Stryker or if it's Striker and everyone mispronounces it, but then I jumped on the bandwagon of peer pressure. Yeah, no, it's a dev chat. just like that's what I hear. Pain ons. I Stryker, see it I in my back. head correctly. I got your back. Striker. See, look, it's, it's his silence means that he likes mm -hmm. the mystery. Uh, former Privateer Press social media manager Josh Kalan says that he loves that red armor. Hello, Josh. Welcome. Oh, hi, Josh. We love you, Josh. We love you, Josh. It's true. We do love the Josh. Uh, okay. I think we're at a, like a reasonable-ish point to stop for right now. For 
for some P3 painters. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, see, see I'm, yep. I'm, I'm liking where that gold's going. I'm trying to envision it over the rest of, because it's got to be up on his shoulder pad and yeah. on the head mm -hmm. there, but that's, not, yeah, that's pretty good. I think if I do this, I'm not going to do the bluish purple cloth. Right. Mm, I think I'll yeah. probably do like just a, a black or maybe like a, a gray, gray of some kind. All right. Let's see. Okay. Some P3 painters. Let's hit so it. if you're not painters, familiar yeah. with P3 painters, <clears throat> this, I was about to yeah, jump into ahead. an intro. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, if you have a cool paint job or conversion or base or anything that's cool for our model range, Monster Apocalypse, uh, War Machine, um, and you want to share it with us, then just go and tag it. And is it specifically Instagrammals? No, no, you can do it on. Uh, we check Facebook and oh, okay. Twitter as well. So yeah, you can ha you can hashtag that bad boy with hashtag P three painters, and then um, basically uh, each week before the stream, Tony and Jordan get together and they pick out a couple that really jumped out at them. And we, by the way, we love all of your submissions. Yes, thank you. Because um, we only have time to show off a couple of them, you know, and uh, we we kind of show them off and highlight some of the community's progress on cool things. Mm -hmm. So if you and, and again, it doesn't have to be some award-winning paint job. If you just got a cool thing you're doing, if you've free-handed a cool Queen of Hearts onto your model or something, you just want to show that off. Great paint jobs, cool color concepts, mm -hmm. whatever you got. And we don't uh, guarantee we're going to show it on stream, but we will definitely look at it. So. We we see everything. Yeah, like so if you've sent the, it in, we've seen it. Some are submissions. All right, so here we go, P3 painters. So our first one is. This bad boy here from Mini Mangler. Yeah. So one of the things that I saw on this that I really liked is um, the use of the the source lighting, right? I was about, mm -hmm. yeah, I was, ah. um, so like seeing the underglow from from the lava on the rock that is Azrael, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe is, it's Azrael. Is sitting on. I always mix um, up uh, Zuriel and Azrael just because their names are so the same, <laughs> even though I know which one to which. I, I remember Zuriel because Zuriel came out before. Like, yeah, yeah. I started playing Way before in. Azriel came out. So I remember and hating to play against Zuriel because I'd always get blown up by him. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I like that. And I like the uh, the green glow from the the spear. The, yeah, I was going to say, kind of I think the, blue, the, green. The, the interesting thing about this is noticing how the wings are different because you'll see that on his right side, our left side, it's all got that glow from the spear flame. That's really cool. Yeah, it's climbing up his arm. And as you were saying, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not even just that there's there's OSL hitting the wing, showing the green glow. Like, it is it is painted differently. Like, it's really getting yeah. affected by that light. Let's take, a, let's take some other angles here. Oh, there's here. a better shot of the glow. Yeah, you can definitely see along the horn yep. here, along the shoulder pad. A very strong, strong glow. Yeah, you can, and I like the uh, the lava rock with mm -hmm. the uh, glow there. It's really cool. Nice job, nice punchy wing. So when you're looking at it from the back, you get something to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really sharp. I really like that. Nice job, Mini Mango. There's a comment here that asks if this is the 60 plus hour one. So I can't verify if this was indeed Took 60, 60 hours, hours of, pain, of painting. I could believe it for sure. But if uh, if Absolutely. that's the case, way to stick with it. It's like a painting for long periods of time. On one project is as oh as somebody how would who does you it. Know? Yeah, wow. as somebody who does it. It's uh, it can be a little taxing sometimes. Yeah, but uh, having a passion for the specific project that you're working on definitely like really helps. It looks really cool. Good job, Mini Mangler. Good so job, I, man. I like this next or, one. Well, man. But then do it last because I see what it is and I. Have oh, no, 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 no. We, we got okay, the last. The order. last one's the last one. Yeah, but this one's oh. fun because uh, uh, it's just kind of a it's a simple model that just like got a little extra. Mm. Extra spice, little red pepper flake. If this is what I think it is, I really want to do this. I'm inspired to do this. So this is from Ponto Hornblower. Oh man, this is dope. Yeah. They so, came from space. I've yeah. not seen anybody do this yet. Yeah, wait, did we have this conversation up. like a, a month and a half ago on Game I think we on? talked about like we were talking about having messed up buildings. Yeah. I don't think we ever talked about having like spaceships or anything flying yeah, yeah. around. Um but like that's a really intriguing way to add a little bit more to Yeah. It gives it like a scenery. story or a narrative. Yeah. Too. Well, and the cool thing is like if you think about it, and you have twenty four buildings that are all beat up or all have things flying around them, mm -hmm. it creates this really cool cinematic effect for your game. Yeah. Which I'm really intrigued to like potentially mess around with. Yeah, that's super uh, cool. 
or having like at least some of the buildings having them. But it's really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's a good job. I really like that. I like also really adore the little like handmade uh, mm -hmm. flying saucers. They're just straight up adorable. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, way to way to beef up something pretty simple. I mm -hmm. like that they painted the um, like the support structures inside of the broken parts of the building. So yes. you can kind of see the like the the weight load bearing columns, mm -hmm. right? Or the the ends of those those columns. I really like that. Yeah, it's cool. I really like that a lot. It is neat. Uh, apologize for the one. Nice you job, Ponto. And our last one? Riker's Good Iron. Oh. Riker's Iron. Look at this. I think he may have been hinting about this thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually I don't remember who I was talking to about this. So I saw this posted on Facebook the other day. And I made a comment to some whoever I was talking to at the time about how clean these uh, these hazard stripes are. So I okay, yeah. Continue. Because um, they're they're very straight and they're very even, which mm -hmm. is a really hard thing to do on a surface like this, right? Um, also, like, the yellow and the blue look really good. Yeah, yeah nice so I was going to say that as, as cool as the Rocket Fist is, like, my That's not even part, the part that's impressive to me. The part that I think uh. is the coolest is blue and yellow is just looks sharp mm -hmm. and hazard striping when done well always looks cool looks awesome well and so and it just kind of like these nice punchy colors it just really yeah. evokes that classic uh comic book comic kind of, yeah. yeah cartoon four, four color process well, it, you know like it, like straight up this looks like a model you would have gone to toys r us and bought off the shelf yeah for real like actually this looks like when i was when i was 10 going to toys r us and being like i want that robot I'm gonna go back. I think this would be this would be one of those that would be on the shelf that I would actually consider buying, never having watched the cartoon first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, no, this is great. And and yes, not to at all take away from your the smoke. The smoke act does look very good. The rocket fist effect looks awesome. Good job on that. Too. And and Rikers, because we know you're in the chat right now, will you uh, please tell us what you made the smoke out of? We were trying to figure it out. Looks like some sort of foam. Yeah, it's very tiny. Tiny granules on foam. I thought. Is. Well, I thought um, maybe it was. Um, it, you know, maybe flock built around a. I uh, think it is. It is some sort of structure. Um, they make these like clumps yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of uh, like spongy flock type stuff. Yeah. Um, like like almost like head clump foliage. Not clump foliage, but like uh, if you look at like you go to like that craft one. stores and you find like little hedges, right? Small hedges, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. That's the material that that stuff sort of made out of. Um, oh wait, I didn't even notice that. Oh yeah, there's, oh I didn't there's even more. notice that. Yeah, there's um yeah like a, a thrust coming out of his things. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, yeah. I popped the and, mic. And uh, if you notice, uh, I believe these Do those are, light up. These are these actual wires. I'm guessing these oh, light up. Oh man, keep going. I, I think like, this thing is wired. Dick, that's great. Yeah. His thumb looks like your thumb. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So there might be more. There might be some, some potentially some more going. Okay, go, actually, go back. Go back, 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 back. Look, there, that's like, there's definitely like a wire thing yeah. there. In his foot. Okay, there might be more. There might be some hidden right things here, we might here. have to see at Lock and Load with this. So interesting. Are you coming to Lock and Load? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been, he's been prepping. Interesting. Okay, I'll be excited to see live and in person. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rikers. Thank you, everyone who submitted photos. Keep them coming. I'm loving we'll seeing them on Pox Showing stuff. them off. And I can't wait and give us a couple months, and people are going to start having their, uh, their Riot Quest models on there, too. Uh, clump foliage on a fire structure. Okay, yeah, right. So yeah, Rikers says that he's, he's, oh, I see. In hyper mode, there are 10 LEDs in him. Is what Riker's Iron says in chat. And so when he that's goes right. into hyper mode, that's dope. Honestly, oh, what I really want to do, um, if and when I decide to paint like a Defender X, is I don't know if anybody here has seen, um, I don't know, can I talk about like TV shows? Yeah, I can sure. talk about TV. So if anybody's seen um, like Gundam Unicorn, how it goes like into its like hyper mode. No one's mode. seen that. No one okay, well, anyways, <laughs> if you look it up, it's like all white normal. Normally, and then like when it goes into its like ultra form or whatever, it's like armor plates separate 
and there's like glowing red mm -hmm. or, oh, okay, or yeah, whatever. Sure. Um, and it looks really sweet. There we hey, go. Man. Validor says no one watches Gundam Unicorn. You know what? You know what? Don't I grew hate. up watching Gundam Wing. I haven't Gundam watched Wing. it either, but at least I know what it looks like. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be cool. I agree. I think I think we're seeing a lot of people doing really cool stuff with their Monpok. Uh, Tyson in Facebook says probably clump foliage. Yeah, I, I agree. It's yeah, Rikers did confirm that oh, what's earlier. Up, it is it is clump, clump terrain. terrain. Okay. I better see some fancy LED stuff from you at Lock and Load. Tyson's coming. He's the LED king. Probably see Tyson and Iron Painter. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. I don't know, Jeff. What's what's your what's your verdict here on this? Uh, I like it. This gold it did warm up to it. I think I will say that that when the base coat is out like this, because I'm going to step on Jeff's comment, it feels very warm. And by the time you're done with it, it is cooled down quite a bit, which yeah, I think I, made a big I difference. I pulled it away from the warm on purpose because uh, I didn't really like how the base coat was turning out. Um, so I added a little bit of like blue in there. Yeah. Um, with the the bad bruise mixture that I've got with a little bit of umbral um, or uh, not umbral but battlefield brown, just to just to darken it up and cool it off a lot. I <clears> approve. <throat> not that you needed it. Approval approval works. You know, there's nothing wrong with approval. Uh, I think we're right up against the clock here too. FYI's. Oh, yeah, we're a little over. You guys got some extra today because it's our last day yeah, until really lock and load. Although I am going to go. You can't stop me. I'm going to dumplings now. So All right. Well, I guess I'm going with you then. All right. We better wrap her up here. All right. All right. Yeah, I guess I got to stop right. painting. I guess I got But I don't want to stop painting. You guys suck. Not, not you guys chat. You guys as in Tony and Jeff telling me to stop painting. Yeah, I want some, some dumplings. Until they, like, go to the force Doe them. Zone. Doe Zone's pretty amazing. If anybody is around who hasn't been to Doe Zone, Doe Zone's pretty, pretty dope. Yeah, all the people coming to Lock and Load, hit us up. We'll go on a Doe Zone trip or a Novilos trip. Get some Brazilian meat well, sweats. Well, Novilos is happening. Yeah, yeah that's it, just our tradition. Not, this is a tradition. We're, yeah, yeah. we're going. That's a... That's we're going to get drunk off of all-you-can-eat meat. But uh, I guess we can do an outro now. Give us that outro. Give us that outro. All right, folks. What's your outro look like? Thank you very much for joining us for our last stream before the end of, or before lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> before the end of existence. Before yes. the end of existence. No, yeah, we <laughs> will again. be just, back. Just days left. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, glad you could join us, and uh, I'll see most of you hopefully at lock and load. Yep. And Maybe we'll, at least some of you. And, we will uh, all be there. Yeah, we will all be there. Jeff, so myself, if you're, Tony. Yeah, if you're we'll coming, say hi. I'll be in the Hobby Lounge pretty much all weekend, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, come check it out. Check it out. Uh, I'm doing a couple of kind of sort of impromptu classes, I think. Um, nothing super hands-on, just kind of a quick tutorial thing. Um, yeah, super cool. If you haven't been to Lock and Load, this is your first time. Um, yeah, the Hobby Lounge, is Jordan's just kicking it there, basically, mm -hmm. painting stuff. And you can you're just hanging out at a table with him, answering he's answering questions. You're, you're asking, you're talking to him. He's showing you stuff. He's pulling models out. Just start doing things. It's it's very personal, really. It's like it's kind of like this, but like you're in his face. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, Danny, Danny it's will be up in the Hobby uh, Lounge too. No, right? about Danny. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares about Danny. Danny wouldn't wouldn't appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of like a live version of the show. So just kind of hang out and, and paint. ask questions, yeah, paint I'll models, be on some infernal stuff probably. <laughs> Jeff, what are you going to be doing there? I will be, <coughs> excuse me, you, I cough exactly as you asked me a question. Uh, I will be running some tournaments. So it'll be T Marg and myself be running Mom Pock and War Machine stuff. Um, besides that, I will also be doing some of the Hangouts. So we're having some developer Hangouts. If you want to come and listen to me yak about uh, creating Infernals and things like that, those are the sort of things that the dev chat or the devs will be hanging out and talking about. Um, and then I will be also commentating uh, on some of the stream games. So right. we'll be doing tournaments for Mompoc. We'll be doing tournaments for Lock and Load. We're going to have, like, coming my narrative. We're going to have other cool stuff going on. And uh, I will be on stream uh, commentating some, probably the War Machine events would be my guess. That's good. 
And by guess, I mean I, I know specifically. I just said guess because that's a <laughs> usual thing people say when they're describing what they're going to be doing for their work. Right. Or gish. So, yeah. Cool. What about you, Tony? What are you going to be doing? Uh, same thing I always do. I'll be sitting behind this here computer producing mm-hmm. uh, some live streams. So you can find me uh, if you can find the magic curtain, Wizard of Oz curtain that I sit behind uh, the whole time out of sight of the public usually. Okay, Just kind of, yeah, I'm a recluse. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. Again, yep. this is our last stream until lock and load because we've got stuff to work on, like lock and load. Yeah, like uh, getting everything ready for lock Yeah, and get, so getting all the infernals cool painted and doing cool videos for the keynote and no, things I'm, like I that. Think, I think I'm done painting infernals. I'm just ever I'm not going to do it yeah, anymore. <laughs> <done so. Yeah. clears throat> uh, anyways, thank you guys for coming, and uh, we will see you in a couple weeks uh, for another show slash lock and load. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Stay frosty, my friends. Yeah, stay frosty. Stay, stay frosty, my friends. Yeah, sure. Whatever. We could. I mean, we can find it. We can come up with like a painting version of that. Stay brushy, my friends. Yeah. Stay, stay brushy, my friends. Is actually not bad. <laughs>